Hi viewers of Lake Kristen, I am Kat from the channel Shalom Alekum, and today Kristen is going to be interviewing me about OCD. Question 1. What is OCD and what types are you diagnosed with? OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, and it is characterized by people having intrusive thoughts that cause them a lot of severe anxiety. Sometimes the thoughts can be words or images or just an urge to do something that makes them anxious. Then in order to get rid of those thoughts or get rid of the anxiety, they feel an urge to do a compulsion also called a ritual. There are a lot of types of OCD and I've had quite a few of them and the ones that I'm struggling with the most right now are probably my pure O OCD which is, stands for purely obsessional OCD and is basically when I have obsessive thoughts but no overt compulsion so if I'm doing a compulsion you can't really see it, it's normally in my head. And also scrupulosity which is OCD around religion or laws. I've also struggled in the past with OCD about germs and perfection but those don't really bother me as much anymore. I've had obsessive compulsive tendencies all of my life because I was a very anxious child. I used to be very afraid of like germs and I wanted everything to be like in its proper place. Um, ironically, I've kind of grown out of that now and that's kind of like the stereotypical OCD stuff, but I wasn't diagnosed with OCD until 2012 when I was 15 years old and I was having horrible harm OCD thoughts, which are basically violent intrusive thoughts that become obsessive thoughts and elicit a lot of anxiety in the person who has them. Those got so severe that I became very depressed and not only that, but I was just very scared because I had no idea what was going on with my body and with my mind. I was just anxious all the time and I was constantly having having these intrusive thoughts pop into my head and I had no idea what to do and no idea how to stop them. So I eventually, I went to my doctor and she sent me to a mental hospital and they diagnosed me with OCD while I was inpatient in a mental hospital and it was probably the scariest thing I've ever done but also the most helpful thing I've ever done because finally I had a name for what was going on with me. For six months after that, my OCD progressed. I developed scrupulosity OCD, and during that time, the harm thoughts went away and were replaced by perfectionism OCD, which I kind of had earlier, but I had a lot worse now. And that stopped me from being able to do schoolwork because I was rereading and rewriting an awful lot, and I couldn't even like go through a whole page without erasing something, like and keep on erasing and rewriting and erasing and rewriting. So it was it's very hard when you have OCD to function in daily life. And that's something I feel people really need to know about OCD, that it's not just quirky behavior, it's really something that can take over a person's life. Anyway, after those six months from being diagnosed, I went to a program for people with OCD. It was for kids and adolescents, and I was only about 16 when I went in. It really taught me the basics of how to defeat OCD, and even more than the basics, I was there for like six months. So I was working with therapists every day, doing exposure and response prevention therapy, working on my OCD, and by the time I was out of that program, my perfectionism OCD was pretty much completely gone. My scrupulosity I still struggle with, and I actually developed um, sexual obsessions while I was there, and I still struggle with those today too, but I am doing so much better than those six months. Let me tell you, exposure and response prevention therapy really changed my life and turned my OCD around and made me able to live my life again, if not completely free from OCD, at least partially free from OCD. Because OCD is something that you have to manage basically your entire life. There is no known cure, but it's something that is extremely manageable if you find the right therapy and get the right support. Question three, what are your symptoms? So my symptoms at the moment are, as I said before, scrupulosity and sexual obsessions. And for scrupulosity, I basically have trouble making decisions. So if I were to choose a notebook to write in, I could spend like 10 minutes just looking at these notebooks, trying to figure out which one is the right one, the right one, I should say, that OCD wants me to choose. Because none of them are really right or wrong, but OCD tells me that it is, and if I choose the wrong one, that I'll go to hell. Which is totally ridiculous and not even biblical, but that's how I feel. And people with OCD rely a lot on just feelings. They want to feel just right, as they say, but about every decision they make and everything they do. So that's basically what my scrupulosity is. For my sexual obsessions, my sexual obsessions, as well as my harm obsessions, tend to focus on a therapeutic person in my life, so a therapist, psychiatrist, anyone like that. My sexual obsessions started in the OCD program about a certain therapist there, and they mostly focused on rape, and then they changed and started focusing on my psychiatrist after I left the program, and then they kind of morphed into more sexual things and less rape things. Those are kind of hard to talk about, as you can imagine, so I won't go into detail. Um, my biggest compulsion for those is just avoidance. I avoid them. And avoidance is a compulsion because it decreases the anxiety. Number four, the hardest part of living with OCD. So number four, the hardest part about living with this disorder. The hardest part about living with OCD is probably 
OCD is something that is a constant thing in our day um, of people who suffer with OCD. It's not like an hour by hour thing, it's like a minute by minute or second by second thing. Any second an intrusive thought could pop up and we'll have to do a ritual. So probably the hardest part of living with OCD is just having to be constantly on watch for intrusive thoughts and for anxiety and compulsions and knowing how much of the day it just takes up. And for me, I've gotten so much better that it doesn't take up as much of my day anymore, but it's still something that I'm constantly working with in my mind. I constantly have to remember, don't avoid that obsession and don't do that compulsion. Because if I do the compulsion, it's only going to make my OCD worse. Number five, coping skills that help me. So here's the thing about coping. With OCD and really many anxiety disorders, but with OCD especially, the worst thing you can do is cope. And that sounds very harsh, but it's true. In exposure and response prevention therapy, we are taught not to cope with our anxiety, instead to just face it head on. And that sounds crazy. It sounds like, why would you ever want to do that? But the thing is, our brain works on habituation. That's when our anxiety goes down naturally. We cannot be anxious for a long time. So the theory behind exposure and response prevention is that if we face our fears, the anxiety will go down naturally on its own without us doing a compulsion. And in turn, by doing that, we are retraining our brain so that the brain knows we do not need a compulsion to get rid of anxiety. So that way we can start living fulfilling, happy lives again without OCD. However, sometimes OCD is just way too much, and I totally understand that. And in that case, you definitely need coping skills. For me, a coping skill is probably a Tangle toy. Now, I will grab one of those and show it to you. This is a Tangle toy. It is basically a toy that you can tangle, you can take apart, and it's basically just something to do with your hands. If you're really anxious, you can just like play with it and do whatever you want with it. It's really fun to play with. Like, another coping skill that really helps me is writing. I like to write poetry a lot about my OCD and just kind of express my feelings in written words because sometimes it's hard for me to let my feelings out through my voice, so written words really help me to do that. Number six, misconceptions. So there are many misconceptions about OCD. And that's why I've been spending OCD Awareness Week on my channel raising awareness for OCD. Probably the biggest misconception about OCD is that it's all about being neat and tidy. But that's not really what OCD is about. Sometimes people have obsessions about those things and will have to do those things as compulsions. But people who are cleaning as a compulsion do not want to be doing it. They're only doing it because they feel that extreme anxiety that's telling them to do it. OCD is an anxiety disorder. It's never about the compulsions, it's never about being clean or tidy or even checking or avoiding. It's always about anxiety. And what is anxiety? Anxiety is fear. So it's always about being afraid of something and then because of being afraid of it, they feel the need to do something to get rid of that fear. And that's something that we all do as humans, right? We, when we feel anxiety, we want to like de-stress, we want to use our coping skills, we want to feel better, and that's exactly what people are doing with OCD, but they're taking it overboard because their mind keeps sending them messages of false danger, and therefore they have to do a compulsion to get rid of that feeling of danger, danger, danger that's going on in their brains. Another misconception of OCD is that everyone with OCD is a clean freak, which is just not true because if you look around my room, it's a total mess. I am not a clean freak. I know many people with OCD who are not clean freaks and who do not even have obsessions about cleaning because as I said, OCD comes in many types. If I were to give advice to someone who suffers from this disorder, it would be to not be afraid to face your fears because as we know, OCD is a total liar. OCD doesn't know anything about anything. All it knows is how to trick your mind into thinking there's danger when it's not. If you start resisting your compulsions, your OCD will get better because doing compulsions only reinforces the fears. But if you don't do compulsions, it reinforces that those aren't real fears. Those are nothing to be afraid of. Let me give you an analogy really quickly. So when we have OCD or any anxiety disorder, it feels like we're stuck in a box, right? Because we put up these walls around us and they're like, okay, well I can't go to this place because it makes me anxious. I can't talk to this person because it makes me anxious. I can't do this thing because it makes me anxious. And we put ourselves in this little box and so those walls just keep getting smaller and smaller the deeper in our anxiety we get. But to break out of that box, we have to go against those walls. We have to push them out farther and include more things in them. If we ever want to be free from anxiety, we have to start facing the things that make us anxious. That will in turn expand our boxes until it includes the whole world again. And then we can live free and stretch and breathe because finally we're out of that 
cramped old box, right? Thank you so much, Kristen, for letting me come on your channel. It has been so fun teaching your viewers about OCD, and I hope you guys learned something from this video, or if not, I hope it inspired you. If you guys want to know more about OCD, be sure to check out my channel, Shalom Alekum, where I post videos about OCD, mental illness, and mental health awareness, just like Kristen. Thank you guys for watching. It is an honor to be a guest on Miss Kristen's channel. Bye!